Uh, so today we're talking about targeted individuals, and um, you know I want to get get a, a little bit into this. Um, you know the, the 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 what people are doing in terms of suing the government for damages. And uh, there's um, if you Google targeted justice, I think what will come up is an organization. I think they're out of uh, Arizona. That represents targeted individuals, and I think they're probably pretty good. Doctor John Hall, who I, I know him, he's on the on one of the people on the board of it, and uh, it may even be he may be a founder of it. But I mean, I was just kind of perusing about the different cases and, and looking at some affidavits of people, and you know, it's the the really sad thing to me about, and we're going to talk about this from a you know completely. You you're going to love this because it's I'm I'm, I'm not going to go off into the. You know, he, I'll explain myself later, but I mean we're going to look at this from a, a nuts and bolts corrupt society uh, level because obviously law enforcement is is there to be law enforcement. They're not there to put people under surveillance using the tools they have and then just basically torturing them to death. Um, that is completely, that's not America. I mean, that's, that's just, that's called corruption and corrupt society. And, um, so, you know, this, this, uh, this, uh, you know, targeting of people, you know, when it, when it, when it comes from say something like, okay, an institution like the FBI or an institution like, you know, law enforcement of any kind of local police, okay, uh, or any or military industrial complex. And that's usually reserved for people that either have some information or have been, you know, there's there's usually a reason a lot of times whistleblowers are just classic, you know, they're like classic targeted individuals. And uh, that you know, if if you're going to be a witness in a in a in a court case, uh, oh my God, the phone, you know, don't you love this part of if if you're targeted to be a witness in a case, the phone is ringing at three in the morning. You know, you pick it up, there's no one there, right? There's it's that kind of thing. There's a strange car outside. It's following you. You you wake up and there's weird, you know, marks on your body. You know, you or you have missing time. And uh, and and all of that harassment, you know, and then of course there's voice to skull microwaves. Uh, the really disturbing ones to me are ELFs because in ELFs you have mind control, what what's really called fear control. ELFs are used to elicit fear, uh, extreme low frequency. That's that's what we, you know. If you want to get people kind of in suspense in a movie, they hit the the subwoofer, right? They they have a, like a button on the mixing console that just hits the subs. And it just gives you this it's, it's this this sub bass that you don't really hear audibly, but it, it makes you feel really nervous, like something's about to happen. You know, like you just can't settle down. You're just really nervous. And then there's the nexus with witchcraft. And let, let me explain from a terrestrial point of view. The, the nexus with witchcraft is that a lot of the people involved in, in you know, in targeting people are into witchcraft and are into, you know, social control. They do social control experiments on masses of people and individuals. Uh, find out who the leaders are, you know, if they're political leaders, you know, target them. Uh, I'm sure, you know, a, a great example would be someone like Julian Assange being targeted by any number of governments who can then bring to bear all the technology of, uh, you know, just invading your head, you know, with thoughts, uh, that they have the ability to, um, you know, and this this is where the nexus gets into, you know, witchcraft, occultism, and all that. There's like a nexus between technology and occultism that's into, you know, reading thoughts and the voice of skull. It's really strange because uh, it's not just people close to towers that will hear things and, and, and there'll be, it's, it's, it's this, this entry in is a uh, is a uh, form of witchcraft, you know what I mean? It's almost like the technology is 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 the spellcaster. So the thing itself, the actual uh, you know apparatus, you know the scientific, you know the mechanical apparatus, can also be used to extend what I would just call organized evil, right? Organized stalking, organized evil. And so, what does one do? And then, of course, when people get on a list. 
it might be for who knows for whatever reason it's like they never get off of it you know they're on it and then they just don't get off of it and it's um uh i've i've read reports now about people that have sued you know the government and sued to 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 to, to you know to, to try to get some peace on this and it seems like it goes away for a while but then it comes back that's like most people's testimony is that it, it's not ever just permanently gone. It, it just damage. It's almost like there's an opening in the person and it can be accessed by any number of people for any number of reasons. And uh, it's basically a war between, you know, the government, if you will, governments, and the people. And the governments want the people to be complacent and they want them to be surface dwellers in society, not questioning anything, you know, watching TV, going to the ball game, you know, just being... And when they're not, when they're they're when they're dropping out, or when they're when they're when they're when they see through it all, and they don't want to become Satanists in order to get along, and they don't want to, you know, they just don't want to participate in that in the whole thing that's there. And of course, a lot of the people that are involved in society, they're minders, you know, they're people that watch other people, and so you can get on a list because you're acting different. Here's one that's they're just different. So they wind up on a list, uh, and and it's uh, you know so you've got this uh, uh, you know you get on the list you can never get off you know how you like you're on the list of the no fly list and you 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 can't get your name off the you would who where do I go to get off the list nobody knows where you go to get off the targeted individual list. There really isn't you know you you can sue everybody you know but they people keep passing the buck to somebody else. You know, they, they admit it's going on and they, they, they say, well, sorry, you're having these troubles, but they don't know how to fix it for you. And, uh, you know, so there's class action suits underway, obviously, from, you know, people that, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, there have been various leaders in society who have been involved in trying to sue for peace. And it... What has happened is the list of targeted individuals has grown exponentially since I started watching that aspect of it, that class action, which was John Hall and others doing that. And that list is, what's happened is the industry of the targeted individual has grown exponentially uh, as a uh, as a result. And, you know, and then there's the... Again, what I, we talked about uh, yesterday, the day before, uh, talking about various, um, you know, uh, call, you know, call it, you know, slave plantations, where you know people from different groups. I mean, there's one for blood types. There's one for targeted individuals. There's one for you know they they gather these people. They sort of you know I, be weary of these groups. I am leery of them. Because they get you there, and apparently, like on the blood type thing, the people or- organizing some of these groups are the ones hunting the people that have that blood type of Rh negative, and so it's like you've got to be kidding me, you know. But but yeah, same thing with TIs. You have this; the organizers are often suspect, and then eventually you see people. They'll do a video about you know the person that had the group turns out to be a. Uh, a gang stalker or whatever, then they do a video about it. And you, you've, you know, we've all seen those. So yeah, it's, it's really tough. Uh, it's, can, can I just t- put it under a bigger tent and all of these issues, just call them one thing. It's corrupt society, you know, and that's what needs to be cleaned up. And the, the number one component of all this, these aberrations like targeting people for no reason. And, you know, sometimes people get targeted just because, you know, they're, you know, a pretty woman, you know, and then they, they want to target them and break them down to, to, to make them a sex slave. There's that too. There's just, it's terrible and it's all criminal. And it, the problem is growing because technology is growing. The ability to um, surveil people, uh, log in, get their keystrokes, know where they're doing online, know where they're going to go, know who their friends are. They get to know the friends. They, they get to know, they infiltrate did a song with Rich Keltner called Infiltrator that was pretty good. And he did a video that I thought was terrific. It was just his first video, but it just was really nice about an infiltrator that, that basically is 
you know, gets into a group and then, then becomes like a psyop, you know, it becomes like the group gets psyoped, if you will. The group gets targeted. The infiltrator's job is to infiltrate any group, find out who the leaders are, or people that, that are, you know, outspoken or whatever, and then target them. And then once they're, like I say, once they're on a list, and we're just talking terrestrial here. I'm not going into, you know, a lot of the uh, the sort of, you know, the, the, the blend of, which is real, of, of, of witchcraft and target. I'm just talking about basic corruption, the government targeting nuts and bolts here today. And uh, because I don't want you to, you know, think that, you, you know, I've tried to teach people how to defeat all these things through spiritual warfare. And I, it's it just the latest example of it is the uh, little treasure orphanage that uh, were in very, very deep, deep trouble and, and they were obviously targeted and then they were being harassed with the threat of guns and shooting guns outside the window and people coming into the building and leaving and, you know, the classic harassment. I mean, but, you know, just really in your face and, and threatening to kill or or kidnap 35 children and, you know, kill the, uh, the, the, the the violent John and all those kind of you know, threats all night on the phone and, you know, all this stuff because they were trying to prevent them, I guess, from, from leaving a certain building and going to their, to, to, to their new place they had built and they're trying to, you know, build a, have a, an orphanage to take care of all these kids. And uh, they do very good work. God bless them. Uh, you know, get involved in that one if if you like it. Get involved anywhere. You know, there's there's any. Go ahead and jump in. There's any. The the whole. There's so much work to do here to help people that are in tr- troubled and and hurting and and all that. That it's that it's almost endless. You know, there's any number of things people can do. You know, so uh, to be of service. To be to, you know, if if you can't think of anything for yourself, like if you're not ambitious. Uh, then obviously, you know, there's other people out there that, you know, need help and that can be an ambition. That's, that's a good thing to do with one's life. You know, my daughter's doing that right now with, I don't even know how she does this, but she's, she rides in ambulances. I don't know if she would mind my saying this, but I mean, you know, picking up victims, you know, trauma victims, obviously in an ambulance and then riding to the emergency, you know, trying to, you know, calm the patient and, you know, be, uh, interface with the patient and you know who may not even know where they are or, or whatever um and it's just not a job that that's just not a job i would sign up for necessarily but i'm very proud of her that she does that that kind of work right and that's on a volunteer basis uh so so you know it's just an unusual thing that you know it's like wow that's cool i mean i you know that's hadn't even thought about that that they need people to to ride along you know to uh to comfort the patients that are on their way to uh, surgery or whatever their whatever the trauma is. Uh, so, but back to the targeted individual, the people that are targeted, they don't really have any remedy. There's no real redress available. So, the, about the only way that you can actually you know fight this thing has to be just like Violet and John and and us. We all were praying that the, these kids will be able to leave. They were having to check outside where there are men out there. They're two in the morning. The men are out there with guns and, and masks hanging around outside, you know, tr- making sure that they don't leave. And if they do, they're going to shoot them, you know? I mean, so it's... Shooting the guns. And they're shooting off the guns at, you know, midnight and one in the morning. And But they had this little window of opportunity. And th- this window was occurred through prayer. It was just... Pr- they They were putting... They're under 24-hour surveillance. You know, like John would leave and he'd go into, you know, into town to try to gather uh, trucks and whatever else to get them, you know, to get out of there. And uh, three men are following him and he's having to go, you know, stay away. He can't come home because he's being followed. And so he can't come home. He's got to stay out. So And a lot of this is coming, you know, from the corrupt police department. Right? This this is just classic gang stalking. Like this is but I mean it's hardcore because you're dealing with guns now. We're dealing with you know, we're dealing with Muslim versus Christian and now it's a whole other thing. So to me, all of this was defeated through prayer and through spiritual warfare to find that opening at, you know, three in the morning. 
They had to get these kids hidden. They had to get them in a truck. And they basically covered the whole truck, the flatbed, I guess. And they had to cover it all up with uh, tarps and things to hide the kids to, to, so they didn't see the kids being trucked out of there. Pretty hairy, huh? This is like World War II kind of escape from, you know, you know, uh, uh, the Warsaw Ghetto or something. <laughs> and, you know, this is, it's, it's horrifying, right? And, um, you know, they had to, you know, in the, in, the, in the middle of the night, there was just that opening. Well, there wasn't supposed to be an opening. There was an opening because the only thing that we could do is pray. And they were having no sleep for days because they're trying to leave and they wanted to leave on the 1st of July and then it got to be the 5th of July. And finally, there was that opening and then they arrived. And the next day, they put up balloons and banners <laughs> in the new place and had a celebration. And then they went out. And they started preaching the gospel to uh, to Muslims elsewhere, where they put themselves back in danger again. <laughs> so, you know, and, and how is it they survive, you know, going into a Muslim village and uh, preaching the gospel and getting so many, you know, hundreds of people coming to Christ, you know, in, in, a, in a, what you... They they call it a revival, but it's a it's a it's not a re anything. It's a it's a it's Jesus, right? It's Jesus, and the Lord. Uh, gives spaces for people to get away, spaces for people to get clear, spaces for them. And all these people, um, a lot of them, a lot of these people that were involved in the, the targeting were doing sorcery and witchcraft on the people, throwing death curses and things like that, as well as the stalking, doing both, you see. And so that's why we always want to have those things together because we always want to present the, 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 the fact that the only way these people got free and got to safety was because of spiritual warfare, prayer, fervent prayer, 24-hour prayer, just constant prayer from friends, family, associates, themselves, and, and God gave, gave us the opening and gave us the way to, to get to safety, you see. And that's the only thing that made the difference. Suing the police department would not is not an option in Lahore, Pakistan. I don't think uh, Violet John would mind my, 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 my talking about this, and they could talk about it when they're on twenty twenty on twenty is coming right up, so they could they can talk about it then. Uh, just but just to show you, you know, the, they had no record, they have no guns. They don't have any lawyers. They called the police to say they were being harassed. The police wouldn't come. Yeah, because they're in on it. Okay, so there you go. Now now that's really a parallel to what a lot of targeted individuals go through here in the United States. And um, the problem here is it's all very highly weaponized and mechanized at at with with advanced, you know, weaponry because they're they're developing more and more of this kind of urban warfare weaponry that they're experimenting on people, people are getting targeted for no other reason other than they just want to experiment on somebody. And, you know, so, and, and, and again, the amount of targeted individual, what I've noticed is that the amount has grown tremendously over the last five years. So even though we have more, it's, it's just like the human trafficking. The same people involved in human trafficking are also involved in sorcery, witchcraft, all the, the dark arts and throwing spells on people and then killing people and, you know, all that wicked stuff, which the Lord defeats. The Lord is a, a million times stronger than Satan, okay? It's, 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 it's a billion times a billion suns. It's the power of the entire universe. There is no contest between God and any anyone doing sorcery, witchcraft, any of that stuff. There is no contest. It's pathetic. And the people that practice that stuff, they are pathetic. Completely. Because they have no faith in God. So they turn to, you know, witchcraft and demons and all kinds of stuff to get at their enemies or their perceived enemies. And they're, they're just like rudderless ships going around in circles. And what happens? It all comes back on them. They get busted. It all, all that evil that they throw out on other people, it comes back. And they get killed. The bad things happen. Mm -hmm. I don't like to talk about it, but I mean, the people that have tried to go up against me over the past, I mean, I'm here. And they're not. 
That's all I'll say about it. I, 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 I pray for protection. I pray for my friend's protection. I pray for uh, people to be protected and delivered from evildoers. People that want to practice things like witchcraft and sorcery and things like that and throw spells on people and try to cause them harm for no other reason than they just feel like it. They just, they just, they just, they just feel like they want to, uh, you know, and then they're, they're shocked. They're shocked when they have their day of comeuppance. They're shocked when suddenly think everything turns bad on them. It's like, you're shocked after throwing all this crap and targeting people and following them around and, you know, causing them to commit suicide and this and that. You're shocked that suddenly your, your, your department closes or you wind up homeless or something like that. You're shocked that you wind up homeless after you're practicing throwing witchcraft on people. Why, uh, why so shocked? God is the power. Jesus is the power of the, of the universe. He's the power, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is life. Witchcraft, all that stuff, and, and targeting people, and surveillance, and, and, and hurting people, and causing people harm, that's all satanic stuff. That all comes from Satan. So the targeting is a direct link. In, in, it's one of Satan's great sacraments, you know, targeting individuals, causing people harm, causing people to become sick, causing people to, 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 be, to be harassed and not know where it's coming from, causing people to be degraded, causing people to commit suicide, causing people to lose their way or lose their, uh, you know, whatever it is in life, you know, their, their careers, whatever, to, to lose their way. And um, distracting them, trying to, you know, tying them up in, in court or tying up, trying to tie their time up and then, you know, controlling them while you're the one targeting them. All of this is just pure evil and God breaks it all and God will destroy, you know, I want, would direct you right now to Psalm 37. That's what the Lord put on my heart today. Psalm 37, every word of Psalm 37 is true. Every word of Psalm 37 applies to today. So all you guys out there targeted by these people realize they're, they're, they're into witchcraft, they're into sorcery, they're into uh, black magic, they're into, um, you know, leaving things. You know, the, the, the practitioners of black magic, before targeting became so uh, uh, technological, would do things like leave things in your house and move things around. Huh, sound familiar? They would you know, get a little lock of hair and they would go do some kind of ritual with it. I was talking to Rich about uh, the Philippines and the just lots of black magic there, you know, just a tremendous amount of uh, spell casting and things and how they would get a little piece of, you know, something from the person and then they'd bury it in a grave and they'd, you know, do animal sacrifices and, you know, they put chicken claws under somebody's bed, you know, that to, to try, try to get power over them or try to get uh, somehow get control over the people and then sort of, you know, make them uh, going in circles and, and whatever. And and God defeats all that just instantly. Jesus, you know, you want uh, black magic on? It's like, Lord, I bind any and all black magic, any hoodoo voodoo, any of those things, any of the dark arts coming at me, I bind it in Jesus' name. Send back to sender, send it to the cross. Uh, I hand it to you, Lord, to be destroyed, any of those works of the devil, and uh, that that they would be convicted and that they would understand that you do not mess with God. And many of these witches are defeated uh, by the Lord and they, because they realize where the true power is. Some actually repent. Some actually repent because they understand the true power is Jesus, the true power is the Lord. And, and the Lord will defeat their silly, stupid, idiotic uh, you know, sense of power. Like a human, you know, is, is not a master of the universe. That's like in some, that's like in a child's mind. That's like a comic book mind. They would think that way. And a lot of these people do. They watch a lot of cartoons and things. And so they basically think they can just throw lightning bolts at people and nothing's going to come back on them. Uh, hello. <laughs> the first thing that happens when you touch one of the lamps of God, you know, is you get tagged. You talk about being targeted, put on a list. God tags people too. 
And a lot of the times he has his people here and there. You know, his people are like not a group. It's 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 wheat and tares out there. Nobody knows who his people are. They they're here, they're there, but they know when someone targets them and they get tagged and they suddenly realize, oh, they don't have any friends. Oh, their whole uh, whatever they want to do in their lives is completely in shambles. Oh, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. Why? Because they they tried to throw something on, you know, God will say, it'll be something like this. They could throw a curse on this one, on that one. They might even be successful in ruining people's lives, you know, and, and running the universe from mommy's basement or whatever. But uh, what ends up happening is you then all of a sudden you pick on the wrong one who has God's protection. And then it's like Katie bar the door. That That person's life will be ruined unless they repent. So tagging has a certain, you know, a certain uh, benefit that the people that are tagged have only one option. They have to repent. If they don't, it's uh, c'est la vie, you know, or c'est la mort. Yeah, that's the end of that. This is not a game. This is not a game. People die. It's not a game. And, you know, a lot of times people are in your own family or in your own your friends or whatever. They, 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 they'll they suddenly become the ones targeting you. And like I say, the targeting, it's it's through, uh, you know, voice to skull. The, the witchcraft aspect of this, the, these people are very good at this voice to skull business. And they don't need apparati or any kind of technological device to do voice to skull. Trish, please. <laughs> so anyway, but I, I guess what's happening here is we're, we're we're equipping ourselves. You know what I mean? Because the real battles are yet to come. I mean, everything we've seen up to this point is. Uh, still benign in the sense that people are not just being gunned down on the street. You know what I mean? It's not like Pakistan, like our friends in Pakistan and, and you know, under that kind of siege yet. But it's moving that direction, despite the fact that Trump is doing what he can to drain the swamp and to reset the world order and to do things that would be benefit to the people. It's still so much corruption. So deep is this corruption that it's just it's just mind boggling. And it's so deep and so pervasive. And, you know, God does reveal himself as the power. And people do have a sense of God. You know, they do see that God defeats all that. But then they don't repent. They stay with the group because the group is easier. You know, it's like, well, if I'm on Satan's side, it's going to be easier. And all the, the the people doing the targeting, they're all on Satan's side, Right. So it's going to be easier, uh, you know, to get along and have a job, to have this and that, because these are gatekeepers as well. So the targeted individual finds it impossible to uh, to get going in life because they're blocking all the doors. And it's just a, a very, very uh, unfair. It is a criminal, obviously. It is completely immoral. And, you know, it goes like, you know, some people have said, well, they believe it's because they're bringing in communism and socialism underneath, and that's and all the police departments are sold out to that, and they're trying to find people that are patriots and all that to target them. Well, yeah, on one level, that's true. You know, that's that's there. There is that push for the new world order, which is a, a global communism, socialism model. You know what I mean? So they're they're working for that. You know, having sanctuary cities and. Uh, you know, no law enforcement, letting people out of jails just to run free and to run the, you know, run the various neighborhoods and that kind of thing that's going on. And then people that would be resisting that would be being targeted. But we also have a real contest for liberty right now. We have a real civil war in the offing that's going on. And, uh, you know, the people that are on the side of uh, patriotism, God, you know, values, families, morals, and my number one thing, common sense. 
that's like the number one commodity, right? The, the one thing that distinguishes people that are, you know, decent people from the from the from the the bad people out there is that the decent people have common sense and they know that we reap what we sow. So they don't go throwing curses on people because they know that's going to come back on them. You rather, you prefer the other one. This Jesus tried to teach this and it got all mangled in the in 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 you know Sunday schools and teachings and stuff. What he's trying to do, uh I'll just summarize it, I guess. You know, what Jesus is doing is like, okay, so you 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 know, you you hurt me, right? And I scream ouch. And so you go, well, because you screamed, I'm gonna have to hurt you again because you know, that's really bothering me. <laughs> the abuser, right? The abuser. <laughs> I got to dig that song out. That's somewhere out there. But yeah, the abuser, right? It's like he, he slaps his wife. His wife screams. He goes, well, you better shut up. I'm going to have to slap you again. It's all your fault. Right? The abuser. Anyway, um, and all of this stuff is related, you know. I mean, it's all it's all you know, bullying, stalking, wife beating, you know, husband beating, keeping uh, you know, using witchcraft to keep the, the husband on on ice as a zombie automaton. I've seen so many of those in America walking around. But anyway, we still ultimately have a contest for liberty. We still have our guns. We still have our common sense, and uh, and the bad people are basically immoral. They want criminality on the streets. They don't care about violence. They want everything to be a sanctuary city. They want open borders. They want, you know, you can see the good and the bad. It's very clear. The lines are drawn. It's very clear who the good and the... So the bad guys are the ones all involved in the occult and witchcraft and sorcery and all that stuff and gang stalking and high-tech weapons and, and yada, yada, yada. It's like, you know, in the military, it's divided too. You know, you had, you know, mucky mucks like Michael Aquino, people working on mind control, that it would, it, mind control basically became targeting individuals. You know, it went mainstream. And now we're talking about whole communities being psychoacoustically controlled through these various uh, weapons and, uh, you know, going to the 5G and then, you know, using that to, to, to plant thoughts in people's heads and, and then train them to the, to the uh, mass hypnosis, which is basically evil. That's evil. That's not a free society. That is a, that is a society that's, um, that won't be sleeping, that will be harassed, that will be targeted, that will be feel, uh, you know, upset every day, that will, will, will be fits and starts in their lives. Not, not able to perform at work or at, 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 in, in society in a decent way. And people say, well, what's wrong with you? And, and you say, well, I'm, I'm, they're targeting me. They're not letting me sleep. They're not letting me, you know, they, they're, they're, they're moving things around. They're leaving things at the door. There's things that I don't recognize in the house that were there. And then I feel like I'm losing my mind. Hello. <laughs> and of course, I've seen the the worst kind of cases I've seen are when people end up dead. You know, the, they go to the hospital for something and they, they just never come out. And I'm so sorry that that is not more discussed. That needs to be discussed, that there is a death component and uh, a murder component, if you like. And... Um, it's just so pervasive right now. It's hard to like draw a line and say, well, this is your targeted individual. Here's your sorcerer. Here's your government corruption. Here's your corrupt police department. Here's your, you know what I mean? It's so vast and so out of control. And nobody knows who's doing what to whom anymore. Everyone's lost. There's, there's no way to turn it off. So I say turn to Jesus. You see what I mean? You got no other option. And those of you out there who have been, you know, I don't know, whatever your problem is, you need to go turn to Jesus and you need to have faith because uh, otherwise, you know, let's just look at the alternative, having no faith, okay? Having no faith, you know, you wind up, uh, you know, like Violet and John and the kids, you, you just wind up being gunned down. The only thing you've got left is faith. 
You don't have any way of fighting any other way. You have to fight it like Ephesians 6.12. You know, you got to fight it with put on the full armor of God. And any of the fiery darts of the enemy, of Satan, of the of, of witches, any of that, defeated. It's like, you know, I break and I bind and I break the all witchcraft spells on anyone listening to this podcast instantaneously and immediately in Jesus' name. Done. Gone. Fini. That's all. No, you don't have to pray for 15 minutes. That's it. It's, it's, it's broken. It's over. God help the perpetrators. God help them. Because they're, the life they have coming up is pure hell. That's right. They're, they're going to, yeah, they're going to hell, but they're going to experience hell on earth before they go to hell. Uh, Psalm 37, folks. Psalm 37. The wicked will perish. And, and Psalm 91. And people will see it. Look up and see the recompense of the wicked. Psalm 91. You know, the wicked will perish. The, the wicked deeds, wicked people, and people that are just trying to scam whatever they're trying to do, they always wind up with nothing. Lost. You know, and then they uh, they try to gather support by being, uh, I don't know, who knows what they do at that point. The only thing they can do to help themselves is Jesus Christ. You know, yeah, we're all sinners, so I can't judge that person. I'm not going to judge. I would say they're wicked. They do wicked deeds, but they could change. I always leave that, and then when I when stuff happens to me, I don't return a curse for a curse. No, I pray. Uh, when I was younger, I suppose I spent a lot of time. You know, I had a lot of a lot of people on my sex, man. A lot of people, like a whole community of people. I had a lot of people from, uh, you know, the hood of, you know, people that really just did not like, uh, you know, the main thing is the pedophilia being exposed and the, you know, human trafficking, child trafficking, uh, you know, um, and, and murders and things like that. They just, right, it's like a criminal cabal that runs our society. They don't want any of that, you know, any... They, they even now you see how Hillary and they're trying to get the the Podesta emails. They never talk about what's in there. Yeah, you know it, it's weird. It's just freaking weird, man. We really, really weird, really weird. And man, you know it, it's it's it, it's the very thing that God will destroy the society. But then Satan goes, "I'm going to get everyone on my side. I'm going to make everybody." compliant to me, and I'm not even going to call it Satanism, I'm just going to call it conformity, have everyone be conformed, and then God will have to punish the United States. <laughs> That's how I'll destroy them. How dare those people worship God? How dare those people uh, say the rights uh, of, of the individual come from the creator? How dare they usurp my power as Satan? Satan has no power with respect to God. It's not Satan versus God. It's God and and everything else. And nothing else has power compared to God. Whatever power there is, God has it. Period. Period. Full stop. Period. You hear that? Period. That is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. Don't even ever doubt that. Because when you doubt things like that, the other side will just have their way with you. They'll make you think you're a big man, big powerful guy. You can really wield your power. Oh boy, everyone's scared of you. And then God just smacks you down like you're nothing, like a gnat, a bug on the windshield, an afterthought. Don't be that guy. Do not be that guy. Whatever your beef with God is, get over it. God honors free will. Free will. Do you hear me? Free will. What is free will? That's, that's love is what that is. And people choose to do bad things with it. You know, God can't just go, well, I don't like that. I better stop it. You know, I mean, you know, people have free will. People have gone corrupt with their free will. It starts with free will and the decision to go corrupt. 
and God will honor that. There's, there's power in that, sure. A guy can have a gun and start murdering people, and, 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 and God gives us space for them to just do that very thing of being like a, a serial killer or something for a while. But ultimately, it always comes back on them. It always just leads to hell, failure, uh, or like I said, an afterthought. In the real truth of things, people that are unrepentant wind up being as if they never were. It's like the first chapter, or there's only one chapter in Obadiah, but in Obadiah, it talks about being, you know, people being as if they never were, like it talks about Esau being as if he never was. People that are proud in their, in their own power, in their own, you know, their own ability on the earth. And, you know, we know who they are. You know, we see them. They're very self-empowered. They're very, they don't have faith in anything. They do everything themselves or whatever. They don't have a vulnerable moment. They don't, you know, they're always having a, a mask on. You never know who they are. But, you know, God hates these people. I'm serious. The same way he said, Esau, I hate. Jacob, I love. You know what I mean? He just, it, 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 it's not a hatred like a human hatred. It's just, it's more like as if you never were. That it's, it's more like a non-acknowledging as human. It's like, okay, the seeds were planted, they come up and, you know, some fail and others succeed, right? It's, it's an act, like, you know, it's not even an afterthought. Esau, I've hated Jacob, I've loved. Jacob, God had to break Jacob, break his leg and just wrestle with him and, and break him down. He was so, so much in his own understanding. He had to be broken down, right? But Esau, he just let him... You know, Esau had his own armies, and he had his concubines, and he had, you know, he had it going on. He didn't really need God. So, you know, as the Bible says hate, but if you look up, if, you know, interesting to do a word study on that hatred is, is it's more like anathema. It's more like a uh, a non-personal hate, if you will. So it's still perfect love in the sense that, uh God loves his own, but he has. But there's a qualifier there that says his own, as opposed to what? Not his own? Exactly. There's not his own. There is his own. Mm. Now the whole the Bible is very clear on this. And people hate this because they go, "We're all one. the New Agers are going. We're all one. Come by, yeah. Let's all hold hands and be one." And it's, it's such such BS and such propaganda. It's ridiculous. But they're the same ones rooting for socialism, wearing the pussy hats, wanting the borders open, wanting no law enforcement, wanting to get rid of, you know, every, you know, wanting to confiscate all the guns, wanting to put all of us in jail for having three free thoughts. These are the useless, you know, automatons, the, 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 rather, rather the useful idiots, the stooges that Satan's using to try to take over America. And they mainly, you know, and it is a political thing. I, I don't need to tell you. Uh, who they are, you know who they are. I don't need to have a political discussion. I don't need to say Republicans or Democrats or this or that or anybody else. You know they're 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 throughout the different parties. You know now they're all en masse. You know who they are, and they need to be removed. If you want to see the targeting, you know, removed, you need the society to to the swamp drain. You need the society to 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 police itself and to rid itself as much as possible of corruption. It has to be taken down at least 50% to function in a, in a semi-normal way. Right now, it's out of control. So I'm not surprised to see the statistics of the targeted individuals, people claiming to be targeted, to have expanded so much the last five years. I'm not surprised. It seems like the more awareness, it's the same thing that's happened with human trafficking and slavery. It's like the more we've, we've talked about, we, we now realize it's bigger now than it was a few years ago. It's, it's the biggest thing in the world right now. Slavery is bigger than it has ever been in the history of the human race right now today. It's grown exponentially, even as the awareness of it and the people being very objecting to it 
even though that awareness has, 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 has risen so much, it has also grown like an industry. It has grown. The corruption has grown. The, the, the cup of iniquity just about runneth over. And when it, when it does get to that high point, uh, God smacks us down. Because that's the thing about the Lord. And, I, you know, I really feel like I need to inquire of the Lord. Father, what would you have me do here? Or how do I handle this? Or, I, Lord, how, how should I pray? You know, how can I get through this? The people are, bad people are targeting me or whatever, you know. Lord, help me. Rather than, you know, I take command and I just, I, I know all the answers. I don't know the answers. I know that uh, in Christ and after walking with Jesus, the more I walk with him, the less there are of those kind of targeting things, but they're still there. I'm still, there's still people throwing, you know, witchcraft and this and that, all kinds of nasty things my way. And that's because uh, of being, ex- ex- you know, even though a very s- small kind of scare guy, but being on the internet, you know, and, and that, and that draws fire as, as you, you know, you, you can, you know, you understand that, right. Those of you who've, have podcasts or have, even if you just state your opinion, you know, whatever your opinion is, maybe you feel like we should be, we have global socialism, let's say that's your opinion. If, you, if you're spouting your opinion, you're strong in your opinion, you're a good speaker, and even if that opinion seems to jibe with where the New World Order wants to go with the world, you'll still be targeted <laughs> because you're a good speaker. For that, just that silly reason, and um, so there's just, it's, it's, and people, you know, I kind of don't mean to laugh at people. Some people say, well, I've, I defeated the perps and I've never had another problem and everything is fine. And it's like, you live here, right? On earth. It, it's not fine. We're all targeted. Every, everything is targeted. Everything is a battle. It's within us. It's outside of us between people, between mother and father, and kids and, and employees and, and everywhere you go, this Evil is royal, looking for a, a foothold, looking for a place where it could be, where the two or three or four are gathered in, in some kind of spell casting thing to, to try to take control of the company or take control of the boss or take control of the husband or wife or do something in that regard. And that's pure evil. That's the blackest, darkest evil there is. And, uh, and even though it results in the fall of empires and the fall of men, they still do it because they're looking for a shortcut. They're looking for an easy way. And they get hammered. And they fail. And their lives are ruined. And they walk around. Some, some, you know, There's a lot of guys out there on the streets today, you know, completely derelict, talk bumbling and bumbling around. You go, oh, isn't that awful? That happened to them. Well, at one point, some of these people were wielding lots of power, and they misused it, and then you see what happens. Misusing power, uh, you know, causing any individual, anyone, especially innocent people, harm that they don't know is being caused to them by targeting them. Now, this is going on all day long throughout our whole society. Now, you start blending in the guy with, like I say, you know, with the, uh, the hacker in the basement that could direct you know, weapons or microwaves or things like that. They're just having fun zapping people. Yeah, you, they recruit a lot of people like that that will just use their computers, get those access codes, and, and zap people just for the hell of it. They don't have any guilt about it whatsoever. They will be taken out at some point. Yes, I understand. They're like garbage. They should be thrown in the garbage heat and forgot, forgotten about. There should be no adjudication. They should just be taken out, you know, uh, how do we know that's not going on now? I have a feeling there's quite a few mercenaries out there taking people out. You just don't hear about it in the news. You think if one of these people got taken out, you'd read about it in the paper? You think there'd be an open investigation? No, there's people taken out all day long in the government, intergovernment fighting between the corrupt and the non-corrupt, and they're fighting each other, people getting dead all the time. You never read about it, hear about it, nothing. Lots of people dying. A lot of death in Hollywood, too. Lots of death, okay? 
going on all over the place. The war continues. The war is spiritual, not material. All this evil has to start in the spirit. The, the, just the idea of zapping you with some kind of, of beam, you know, uh, right there. But before that button gets pushed, something happens in the spirit, right? It, it, it gets triggered there. And that's what I mean. So that's where your solution is in the before it happens department of the spiritual realm. That's where the solution lies. Otherwise, you're just going to be randomly zapped everywhere. You, 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 you be no peace. I know people that have pretty much lost everything due to being targeted and, and just because they just can't function and they just aren't finding redress and they're trying to coalesce with people. They join groups trying to figure it out, trying to get a class action suit together, trying to get, you know, as a group go up against who, who they believe are the problem. And then it gets, the goalpost gets moved. The, the thing gets moved. The, the people they think they're, they suddenly get, they're, they're not there anymore. They, they're, the trail gets, gets lost. It, it's just like that. It's just the most awful thing in the world. And it's, you know what I think is just as bad, though, is like, you know, we're all targeted with chemtrails and all kinds of poisons and toxins and, you know, making us feel bad. And we could be, we could feel probably 100% better, you know, but they're just beating us down with all the toxic, you know, uh, environment. And nobody gets in trouble for that stuff. And everyone's targeted with that. The bad guys, too. But if you wanted, you know, evil is organized in this in this planet it's, and weaponized. If you want to join that side of things, they have a million ways and a million places they can indoctrinate you and initiate you into it. So all you have to do is say yes. Free will is what they're looking for. You have to use your free will, though. You have to, of your own accord, say, I want this because I want to get even with so-and-so or I want to do this or I want to be a – uh, a big uh, zillionaire, or I want to be a politician, or I want to be a somebody in this world. So, and you know, you guys seem to be the kingmakers. So, how do I get in? And then Satan says, "Just say yes. That's all you have to do." Just like the band, yes. I wonder why they name themselves yes. <laughs> I wonder why they call themselves yes. Uh, and they're big new agers, right? They push all the new age stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Virtuoso musicians, uh, I hope they enjoyed it. I, I think they're a little long in the tooth now, are they not? Yeah, all these people are dying now. Better get right with the Lord, you guys. You got about two seconds to straighten this thing out because you, know, you perpetrators out there, throwing curses, targeting individuals, uh, you know, running, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, microwaves on people and just, you know, basically stalking them, following them. Here's the stalking. What I think it really gets exotic is when your entire world is the Truman Show. Every single person has been assigned to you. You have no friends. You have no wife. You have no life. Your job is artificial. Every single thing was a setup. Every single where you eat, the waiter, the waitress. All a game. Every last stitch of it. Everyone you see, everyone you talk to, everyone you interact with, everyone's in on it. And you're the only one that doesn't know. Then you ask yourself, why would they spend all that money on little old me? Because Satan is in that business. Because you may see yourself as little and weak, Make no big deal. But see, they see you the way you really are in the real world, which is not this world. You're the opposite. The first will be last, and the last will be first. Comprende. I know that's not the way to say that. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, so everyone is important. And that's the way that uh, they look at it. So you might think you're insignificant, but you're artificially so. You're here as a sojourner. You're not here. You're not making your house here. You can't live here. You're going to die, man. You're going to die. It, we're all going to die. 
So you got a certain amount of time, right? And you got so much time to do X. So what is that? And then what happens to you after that? This is just a suit, this flesh body. It's just an external suit. It, it's, it, it's actually an interface that allows us to be interfacing with a time-space continuum here in a th- th- third dim- three-dimensional uh, environment, which cuts out all the other dimensions. Okay, so it's a temporary suit you're wearing. But what's going to happen later? I mean, what's the whole point of all this? Right? I'm not going to answer it for you. I'm just, you know, this, this, these are the big questions. We, you have to answer it for yourself. i got to answer it for myself. We have to answer it for ourselves. And, and I just keep saying, you know, again, child of the Most High God, you know, Holy Spirit person. Uh, my advice for the, for the witches and various people tuning in, I haven't talked about tagging and blessing in a, a long time, but um, if you touch a lamb, you're tagged. Yeah, I, I think you'd, you'd, you're not getting out of it. The good news is you can repent. The bad news is the world will have nothing to do with you. All your friends, your job, everything's going to dry up. It's all going to go south. And so, right, which will break you down, which will eventually cause you, hopefully, to repent and get on with what the real purpose here is, which is to align yourself with, with home, with, with your maker, with, with the truth. Amen. See, even then, God is not, he's, he's so merciful. You know, when you're tagged, i.e. picking on one of his, which, of course, he's going to defend his own children, you pick on one of his, you pick on, it's like throwing a rock at the entire kingdom of the living God and all the angels and all the warring angels and all, all of it. It's, you throw a rock at one, you throw it at all of them. You throw it at everyone. And it's going to rain hell fire on you unless you repent. <laughs> and even then, you still got to pay for what you did. He tried to hurt innocent people. But if you're, you're tagged, it's, you know, no matter what you do, you know, whatever it is, it just won't work out. You know, it's just, you know, it's, you'll just be invisible. So you get a little, we're invisible. The lambs of God are invisible. Well, how does one know they're a lamb? I think basically through default. Are, you know, let's, let's work it backwards. Are you uh, with the world looking to wield the power of the universe? Are you uh, conformed to the world system? Looking the other way on the evil, trying to get yours. Very ambitious. Blah, 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 blah. Have you, have you thought about God? Like, do you think about anything? Or is it just all competition and beating the other guy and getting the brass ring and all that? Well, if that's true, and you know there's all that evil and you've, you've consented to it so you can have your shot, right? If that's you, you're having second thoughts now. Why? Because you're older? Because things that you thought were more permanent of, you know, nothing's permanent. You know that. So, you know, I'd say repent. But, but, you know, if you're ever going to be one of God's, here's, here's the prodigal son, okay? The prodigal son may be super successful in the world, competitive, you know, zillionaires, da da da, da you know, you know, power broker, or whatever, right? But there's just something in that person. When you sit down with that person, they want to philosophize, they want to talk about the meaning of life. They, they're looking, you know, they're going everywhere looking for you know, some kind of redemption, some kind of, I know people like this, that they're very successful. So far beyond success, it's ridiculous. I mean, they truly wield the power of the universe here over men, right? But they're looking for redemption. And they, they, it's just something that's burning within them. They can't put it out. They've got to have that. They, they're trying to find a way to like to have a, to, to bridge the two, their ambition and all the sinning and all the bad stuff with, with God and God will have none of it, you know? So, so they, they, they're afraid of Jesus because if they become a Jesus freak, all their friends will reject them and they'll lose their position in the world. They'll lose their job. 
They'll lose the ability to wield the power of the universe. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If, if we could just do it without Jesus, they'll say. Then, then, you know, social pariah Jesus. Oh, yeah. Ooh, wow. Yeah, revelations today, huh? <laughs> the Lord is good all the time. God is good all the time. I'm ecstatic right now. I'm just, you know, just realizing that it's it's all about that true joy is rest in the Lord. You know, true joy is, you know, alignment with God. You know, how, however, whatever that means. You know what I mean? Alignment uh, in Christ, uh, in the Spirit, resting in the Spirit rather than the worries of the flesh and all that not worrying about death, not worrying about anything, but just being there in that moment with, with God is true joy, right? No matter what your state is, remember how sick or well you are. I mean, that's the, that's the pinnacle of human existence. That's the, that's the top of the mountain, folks. And you would think with so many bright and talented people and capable people that you would have more people, you know, competing, if you will, to be one with God. But you see, our society is so corrupt that it has shaped people, you know, that's become the the thing not to do. They want you to do the opposite, to use your power and when you're young, you feel like you have a lot of power. You got a strong body, and you got, you know, you got a, maybe you're ripped and worked out, and you got muscles and stuff, and you're driving a fancy car. And you feel like you've got this. You, you need more, but you you're on your way, right? And in most of these people, what I see is just there's not an emptiness, but a, you know, there's like something that needs to be dealt with inside them. You know what I mean? And so, like a lot of times, people just kind of have their mask on and talk about very shallow things, you know, kind of kicking the can down the road for living another day, and then you know focusing on things like the sports and the you know the markets and what they're going to do to really boost themselves tomorrow and their their ambitious plans and all that and um but you can see sometimes, not not all the time, but you can see there's something else going on. You know, a lot of times what people present isn't what their need is. What people present to you is, is what they want you to see, not what's really going on within them. Within everyone is a yearning for God. And that's, you know, and, 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 and the only way Satan could rid that out of people is to have a secular society that just tries to substitute everything in the world for that 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 thing that only God can fill. Only the Lord can fill that space inside each one of us that just needs to align with eternity. We know we're going to die. We need to get right with God. We need to align with, you know, uh, eternity, with creator. We need to understand what's our purpose, where we're going, where we're... We need Papa to take us by the hand and say, it's all right, Child, come with me, you know. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we need we need that alignment or, or we just have, it's like being starved to death. And so I see a lot of people, I think if they go to the gym tomorrow and they start, they really get disciplined with all that and they remake their bodies and remake their wardrobe or remake this or remake that, you know, in, in, in middle age, then they'll get back on track. As if being like a commercial on TV, you know, like being one of these characters in the commercial is is something to envy, which is a pretty sad state of affairs. Now, you know, there's a certain, and like I said the other day, I said, well, I don't really have much of the way of ambition, and, and um, I, I used to have a lot of uh, drive and ambition to... As a, as, as a writer, for one thing. And, uh, you know, I went through this whole rejection thing. We talked about that yesterday, the spirit of rejection. And uh, actors, writers, musicians, you know, people that uh, 
want to be in the, you know, in the arts or whatever. It's, it's, there's only about, you know, 1% that makes it there, you know, and the rest are rejected, you know, and, and uh, it doesn't really matter how good or bad you are. It's, it's just, sometimes it's just dumb luck, you know, but whatever it is, they're rejected and eventually that they become traumatized. They feel like there's something wrong with them. They're a freak. They, they're, they're, they, you know, the whole world's rejected them. So they turn on God. Or they throw stuff at the people of God, or they do some stupid thing like that. They they let their emotions overrun their reason, and that's just one thing I notice with uh, people in the arts seem to be more led by emotions rather than reason, which is which is good. That's why they're in the, those fields. You need to be sensitive to 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 be able to create. But um, you know, they just don't understand why. You know, if there is a God, why would God? leave them with their talent, this and that. And the answer, I have the answer, and I'm going to lay it on all you artists out there, because I know I got a lot of guys in Los Angeles, you know, I know you're listening. (laughs) I know you're listening. No, I'm not targeting you. I'm not following you. I'm not, you know, I'm not, don't worry about me. I'm I'm just, you know, just just flowing in the spirit. I just, yeah, you you know, hey, all is forgiven as far as I'm concerned. You know, I, I, I have no problem breaking bread with brethren, brethren that maybe used to target me, and then now we're, and now they've repented and given their lives to Jesus. Now we're family. God, no problem. You know, the Lord says, it, it, I don't even need to, it's just automatic. Just like uh, Wormbrand's wife, you know. Guard that killed her whole family, you know, gave his life to Jesus, and that, and then they were having a Christmas dinner together uh, with a guy that killed her family and breaking bread as brethren and with true love. Yeah, you have to leave people the space to sin. I mean, they're sinners, you know, but then when they give their lives to Jesus Christ, you know, and and, and no, they're not going to murder families anymore. If they are, then they have no faith, and then they don't really, then there was no real conversion. There was no real uh, baptism by fire. There was no, uh, there was no um, coalescence. That It didn't happen. They, they want it to happen, but it's always God's timing. So you say, well, how do you know if someone's brethren or not? And it's just like every case is different. But anyway, so you're listening out there. So let me tell you the answer to the whole thing of the riddle of the arts. First of all, Numero uno, you're you're and it's going to piss you off because it's true. The whole reason that you want to be an artist is irrelevant. The reason is carnal. The reason has to do something with wanting respect or wanting mommy to like you or you know the daddy who rejected you to finally you know embrace you or some kind of thing you know. There's those reasons, and then there's like because you're programmed by the commercials and television and everything else to want that. It's not even your idea. If you look at the if you look at the the whole uh, arts community, it's 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 a lot of people that become art famous artists. They're like gods. It's this need to be above other people. This need to be a god. It's it's not just a need to sell your work. It's a need. There's some other thing going on there that has to be questioned. It could be a number of things. It could be nothing, but it has to be questioned. Let me explain the thing about the arts. The arts are no different from a, a carpenter, a hairstylist, a uh, you know a, 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 a famous actor, a uh, a waitress. It's all this. It's it's not. It's all irrelevant. It's, it's it, who told you you had to do that. It doesn't matter if your quote talent goes down the drain. What would be the alternative? That the world would love you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And see what I mean? the 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 idea that that became some important goal, rather than put into perspective into the perspective of life here, what we're struggling to live, struggling to be, struggling to find a way to live. And whatever it is, whatever the endeavor, whether it's an airplane pilot or an actor on a stage or, you know, a a, a literary genius or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. In God's eyes, 
all those endeavors are equally unimportant. Or, you know, equally important if that's part of God's plan, you know, that's, but again, equal. No hierarchy. That's the thing with us. We don't have a hierarchy. So there is no making it. I'm going to go to Broadway and I'm going to make one. I'm going to make it there. I can make it anywhere on Broadway. I'm going to really, really sell out. I'll do anything they want if I could be a star. And that's the one thing God will beat that out of you. There are people that belong to the Lord who are stars. You say, well, what's the secret? The secret is having one of the secrets, according to Mickey Rooney, you remember the whole, you know, poor guy who was so abused as an elder. Yeah, we have to talk about targeting the elderly because this is, it's, you guys, you know, a lot of you, you're not even realizing that the elderly are picked on every single day by horrible people that somehow get access to, you know, they want to be around the people dying because they fit, they suck off it like parasites. Uh, that's, that's, that happened with the, with that woman that worked for Rajneesh. Well, you know, that's a whole other realm of targeted individuals. Everyone that's elder that gets sent off to one of these places, that gets, if they have any money somewhere, they drain the bank accounts and they torture them and they try to torture them to death. Terrible. And uh, there's so many problems. It's, our society is corrupt. So wanting to be the top of the heap, you know, desiring that above all else. If, you know, and like I say, God will put people in different places, at the top of the heap, the, this, there, there are all kinds of things God will do to people. But the one thing I noticed, and we were talking about Becky Rooney, he said, well, he so he was asked, "What's the key to being a successful actor, Mickey?" Besides going to Hollywood High School, and you know, my mother went to Hollywood High. <laughs> the same time that Mickey Rooney and these other kids, the Hollywood kids, went there. And that's something. Um, there's a there's a tidbit for you. Uh, but what's the key? He goes, "Not looking." That's the key. Not wanting it. And there, you know, Mickey Rooney hit on a real kind of secret of God in the universe right there. You know, and um, I was very determined as a writer. I mean, I wrote, 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 did everything you could possibly do, including just, you know, years went by. Just, you know, I was just nose the grindstone, you know, cranking out pages, cranking out pages. And, um, you know, get setting up meetings and going here and going there, doing everything. But it just seemed like, you know, just things, it was just like, just reject city, you know. And and then and then you see other people that I would, um, I had, you know, the benefit of being uh, the person that would go into people's homes and program their computers to uh, format screenplays. So this gave me access to producers, writers, you know, people that were very successful, and very much at the top of the heap. Besides the kind of, you know, the non wink satanic thing. Besides that, oh yeah, that. The fact that they would never put Jesus on their sleeve. You know what I mean? They would never. And, and there, there were people that were God, pretty God-fearing. You know, I would just say decent, good people that I, that I dealt with who were producers and, and writers. People that you probably have heard their names. Um, and they they were, you know, they all treated me well. You know what I mean? I was just the guy that came in to, you know, they were all happy. I would, you know, back in those days, if they could format a screenplay with a computer program and they would come out all format, they, they went crazy. It was like a miracle happened. So I would be like the miracle worker, you know, right? I, I go in there, they're just fiddling around on a word processor and page breaks are happening all over the place and things aren't being formatted right you know the dialogue uh, section and the and the you know the the character name is not even to the one below it and it's just a mess right and so you go and show them how to have it all lined up perfectly page breaks everything you know n- numbered scenes top and bottom continued you know the whole thing for like if you're in production you have to keep revising scripts so you have to keep track of what was there before and what you know what changes were made and it's really pretty complicated uh and and when you teach them to do that, they're like, oh, my God, 
I don't need five secretaries. I can do this myself. So I was there during that period. And I got to see, you know, uh, basically what, what, you know, the people who won Academy Awards, just different things. I got to see what was really going on, you know. And what was going on, the one common denominator I could say about just about every encounter besides, and like I said, I never saw the evil side of them or what they were into, or there's, there were quite a few people that had uh, what I would call alternative lifestyles. Of, but that, it was always with me just technical. It was just like a technical relationship, you know. But the, the vibe that I got out of the whole thing is the people that were the most successful really didn't, get, didn't care. I mean, they really just didn't act like they were ambitious at all about anything. They were just kind of like Joe Normal. And the ones that were lower down on the on the ladder, they were real competitive. Like, you know, got a good, like little pit bulls, you know. They just wanted to grab onto it and get it. And now looking back on all that, because now we're going back, I don't know how many years, I don't even want to know. I mean, you're going back to the... Uh, the, the, the first part of the 80s, right? 83, 84, right? That's when that... that whew, whoa, jeez, man. I can't... God, that just... Seems like it did. I was... I was, you know, still uh, an adult. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, no, I mean, I noticed that. I noticed that, that thing that Mickey Rooney was talking about. A lot of these people don't even, they don't know why they're successful. You know what I mean? They they want to invite them to, you know, to a seminar to explain to people on a cruise ship, you know, here we have a seminar with so-and-so, the famous guy that wrote this or directed that or did this or whatever. And uh, privately, they'll say, well, I don't I don't really know. You know, I had connections. See, that's that's... If you look at uh, on the music side, the band Metallica, they all blame their success on the drummer, who had connect, who had quote connections, and those connections helped to, you know, propel it. So I suppose connections is a big thing. But a lot of these people were like, they were questioning how they got there. They're just, they're just kind of there doing whatever they're doing, and there wasn't this like I gotta get to that. You know, there wasn't this. Yeah, I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna, you know. And it just seemed like the people that had that real competitive, sort of real ambitious thing going on, they wound up working in Hollywood, but they be, ended up working at other jobs that they didn't want, you know. They, you know, and then they, they built up resentment so that when they got to be on an independent film or something that was being filmed, all the anger went to the director because they should be directing. They should be in the driver's seat. They could do it better. They're more qualified. They got more chops. Their stories are better. They really got it going on, and this guy's a loser. And with that attitude, they ensured that they would never be successful. They spent their time targeting the director, trying to cause a mutiny, whispering in each other's ears in the background, stop, 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 stop. yeah, he's really a bad guy. Demons are taking over, whispering, whispering, whispering. And they end up one big failure. Uh, you know, and when they're not drunk out of their minds, they, they might say, it's the world's unfair. I, I've done all this stuff and I deserve better. Now look at them, I didn't do anything. I have really suffered for my art, for my thing, whatever it is. And I deserve to be respected as numero uno. And look, I'm just schlepping coffee and bagels and cream cheese for these assholes. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? <laughs> I'm only laughing because I'm old. I'm, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm an old man at this point, you know? It, if I was 35 years old right now, it wouldn't be very funny. I wouldn't be, I, honestly, I wouldn't be laughing. I, I can laugh now, can't I? <laughs> oh, oh boy! Oh, you know, I've, I have to have some fun, even on this targeted podcast. My point about the targeting is that you know the the you know I still stick to the point yesterday, which is you know the the, the targeted individual needs a spiritual uh, relief. And that's the only relief a lot of these people are going to get. And hopefully the Lord will lead you out of it. Now with me, 
Nothing ever went away completely, but it was like things got a lot better with the Lord. But I've always been different, so, it, you know, people are going to, you know, uh, do whatever they're going to do if you're not, you know, in the norm. And uh, so that's, you know, but but the Lord has steered me out of many, many, out of harm's way, but also into harm's way a couple of times where I had to learn a very valuable lesson about you know, people, you know, witch, witchcraft and you know, poisoning and just people that really uh, meant tremendous harm and, uh, and uh, you know, inflicted it. And, I, and I, I had to learn, you know, I had to learn that, uh, you know, it's everything is a battlefield out there. You can't really trust, you know, trust but verify. You know what I mean? You can't really just blanketly trust people. And, um, you know, it seems like every time there's a lesson that I have to learn, it's because I just, you know, needed to keep my powder dry. I needed to keep my vigilance. I needed not to trust, you know, trust to a point, but, you know, basically watch out, right? Because you know, it can come at you from any direction. Now, if that's the attitude of a targeted individual, uh, I'd say there's nothing really wrong with that, with being vigilant and, and looking to see where it's going to come from because someone's always going to be trying to throw something or trying to find, if you're in a, especially if you're in a weak state. Like a lot of times, here's, there's a pile-on principle. Let's say I'm struggling because, you know, the whammies are thrown. You know, not, We went through a little spiritual warfare here recently. No big deal, but it was just, you know, it was just, it was a drag, right? I, 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 I'm bored. It bores me at this point. Um, the two things I know to do, you know, when you're under something like that, I just, I tend to, you know, just kick the stall down. I will break everything apart. I will just double down on whatever I'm doing, you know, whether if they're trying to run me off or they're trying to get me to blink on doing podcasts or be embarrassed or whatever. I just like, okay, let's do 5,000 more podcasts then. I've always had that, you know what I mean? And that's been one of the saving graces that the Lord has given me, you know, just this, okay, because I'm not afraid of work. I'm not afraid of, you know, even if a lot of times when I feel terrible, like I just can't go on type of thing, and I pick up the microphone or whatever, and then I start in thinking, oh, this is going to be lousy. You know what I mean? And what am I doing? And, you know, if I should have something to say before I, I should research some topic or I should... A lot of times, that's when you really want to have the mic on because that's when you're going to say something that might help somebody else. And so the purpose, what's the purpose of this podcast? Is it ambition? No. The purpose of the podcast is to share, but also it's, a, it's an outreach to try to you know, help other people through relating to what I'm saying, the, using my gift of, of gab, let's say, to, to help other people be able to, to relate in their own lives, not... It's got nothing to do with me. It's just, it's like there's a lot of people that'll listen, they'll get going, and I won't see them for a few years. And then a few years later, I'll see them again. You know what I mean? It's like they don't even know why they're, they're back. They're just, you know, there's no coming and going. Here, everything is open. You listen, a couple of podcasts, you go listen to everybody else, you go, you see them three years from now, they're, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? This, this is the way of the kingdom, this is the way of God. No hierarchies, no, no attachments, no, none of this codependent crap, none of that. None of this, you know, well, you made a commitment to be there, and now look, you left. Oh, that's five demerits. There's something wrong with you. No, there's none of that. It's open. Everything's open. You know, everything is free. And uh, there's no obligation. There's no, no need to... Uh, uh, you don't have to do or do anything. You, 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 some, you know, there's some guy that he must have listened for a few minutes and he just finally concluded I was a dumbass or something. So he writes this on the page. That's his comment. It's like you're free to have that comment. You know, if, if you can't relate. Then by all, by no means does anyone want us not here to stop anyone from anything. But something happens. You know, when you when you overcome, you know, all that that could just hold you down and then you just beat the hell out of it. You just go on to the next thing. Something happens. It's like overcoming. It's like what Jesus talks about in, in uh, the book of Revelation. You know, 
the, the, the he who overcomes. It's like, yeah, you got to, because you could sit there and feel sorry for yourself or you could, you know, and all kinds of things can happen. And, and you can, you know, lament, right? Lament. A lot of people lament a lot of the time and it prevents them from actually being, you know, from doing anything. Uh, or you can just go ahead and do it again and then feel bad later. You know what I mean? But there's always in this world for people that are sensitive and there's nothing wrong with being sensitive. People say, oh, you they've sensitized you. No, they didn't sensitize me. I've always been sensitive. And then I was able to see what was going on, you know, the targeting. And, and by the way, you know, when I was a teenager, it was so long ago, the, the, all this targeting and, and, and all this stuff was going on the same as it is now. Just not with the, the high tech, you know, the weapons exactly, but the surveillance and following and police and this. Yeah, it was all going on the same way. And it was all because, why? Because if you're not conforming to the world, if you're not in their club or whatever, that, that you know, that's who they follow around. It's that simple. And yes, they are the, it, yes, it is society. That's right. The police, the fire, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the lodge, the, the, you know, the, the pizza place, the, 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 they're all in on it. They can be at the hive mind. Sure. They can all be in on it to where you can't go anywhere where they're not, you know, nodding and waking at each other and go, Oh, Hey, another one just walked in. Oh, hello, sir. May I help you? Huh? And then you're triggered. Oh, shit. I, I got to go home. I, I got to get out of this. Just, how could they know? I'm, I'm at the supermarket. Was, you know, a Safeway market on the other side. It's, hey, it just walked in. Uh, hello, sir. May I help you? Oh, checking out. I see. Hmm. And how's your day going today? Oh, I, oh, uh. Here, here's one that I that, that was really stunning. It was like in a, you know, in a, it was like in a, in a, you know, a, a save on pharmacy or something. You know, I can think of, I'm, I'm smiling. Go, I'd never seen this person before in my life. Oh, you're happy today. Uh, oh, uh, uh, what, what, today? Do you know me? <laughs> oh, yes, we know you. I've never seen you before in my life. Why did you say you're, you're happy today? Like you've been watching me. Ha 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 ha. There are people clearing their throat behind the counter. You know. It's not funny. I know. I know. I, I'm, I'm talking in lingo that only you would understand. Only you guys that know what I'm talking about would understand. Uh, that happened not too long ago at the local Walmart here. And the people that were coalescing against me were, um, they didn't know each other. And all of a sudden they started, you know, acting in unison like a troop, like an acting troop. And uh, I just said, I just felt angry because I was like, why is this happening now? I thought I was beyond that. I thought I was going to catch a break, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden it's back? What does that mean? So I go, you know, boring. And I said, you know, like, boring. And then I started whistling, like, <laughs> just really crazy whistle, like, 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 like they might do. And I started grunting <laughs> and whistling and then laughing. Yeah, <laughs> boring. <laughs> and and, and it, it all busted up immediately. It was gone. Boom, scattered, scared little rats running off the ship. That was classic. I wish you were there with me. I wish you could have seen that. That was one of my better moments. Usually what happens is I just try to kind of duck under the radar, you know. So, okay, let's just ignore that it's going on. You know what I mean? Just get what you need and get out of here. That's the huge, right? 
But I just decided. I don't know why. I just felt bold, I guess. I Usually it triggers a fear cord in me. And that fear cord is irrational fear because they can't do anything. You know, there's no reason not to be bold. But there's a fear, if it triggers that fear cord, that, that sort of fight or flight that was from, you know, when you were younger, right? When you didn't know what it was. Or, you know, and if you get to where you're, so what they're trying to do is they try to get you to address it. Like, you know, you go to the cashier, you go, are you in on it too? They're, they're following me back here. What do you, what, what do you know? And then that kind of talk winds you up in the loony bin. Yeah, they would love to sequester you away. You know, they would love an excuse. And if you start talking like that, you start telling them, or you go try to go to the police, you go here or there, you go to your psychiatrist, you go to therapy, you go to the pastor, the priest, whatever. Uh, no, it's not, uh, let's lay hands on you and have some prayer. No, it's off to the loony bed. You know, where they're, it's another part of the fabric of our society to just conform the cattle, the commodity called human, to conform them all, get them all behaving properly, control and deliver. Away from God, keeping in the prison system, keeping it going. The spiritual prison. Now you see how it all works together. It all works together. And no, and those people, did they have training? They may have had individual training, uh, perhaps, but they did not know each other, nor had they worked together before. They just knew what to do. It was like they knew to take their cue. It's like, oh, okay. And then they start in. Right? <clears throat> Isn't that awful? Do you know how, how painful it is to be tortured like that? To feel like an absolute, like you should never have been born. Like you wish you were just never born. You didn't want to be there. You didn't want to bother anybody. But for no good reason. You're feeling pretty lousy anyway. They pile on. You tell someone else about it, they go, yep. Well, anything else? Nope. So you're just going to keep your lip buttoned, huh? And then there's traps, too, where they try to set traps. You know, where are you going to be? Hey, I'd like to meet you there, you know? Hey, I mean, great to meet you. I've been listening to the podcast and this and that. And these people are not on the up and up. They're just, they know when there's a place you're going to be and there's a gathering, they, they're going to try to get you. What do they want to do? Well, they're either going to, you know, feed off you or they're going to try to uh, put you in whatever club they're in, right? They're going to try to get you in, you know, to, to give up your soul, be like them, take their mask off and go, I never was your friend. I'm just, this is, you know, but, but see now you're, you're not even un unhappy. You're happy that, you know, all the harassment stops today. Congratulations. That moment's available for anyone that's targeted. Well, more or less. <laughs> more or less. I, I can't say anyone, but yeah, one way to end the targeting is to become one of them, right? To become, a, yeah. Well, exactly. Uh, but most of the people that would say they're Christians or people that would write me and stuff, they were, none of them were sincere. None of their emails were sincere. They were all in on it especially back around 2002, 2003, at the beginning of all this. They were, they were, there are tons of stalkers around there. Hey, really been enjoying the podcast, the writings of the podcast. Hey, what's that? Can we get together for lunch? Can do this, do that. And so, because you get burned so many times by people that say they're your friend, you then just don't trust anybody, which is another part of it too, called isolation, which by the way, they're doing en masse on Twitter right now. Facebook, they've already separated us. We're already separated from each other. Facebook's now a joke. I, I don't see anybody in their feeds, people I used to see, a lot of people I interacted with. They're just not there anymore. There's a few people, but it's, we're all, comp I feel completely separated out from everyone. But on Twitter, they got rid of like, I don't know, 1,500 followers I had, most of whom I interact with. Not robots, real people. And they just got rid of it. So now I don't see 
all the kind of news and things that I used to see, they separated me, except for the more or less the people I deal with more often. Thank God James Woods is still there. He's always good, and, you know, political people and, you know, all that. And thank God some of the prayer warriors are there, you know, and, and, and I always appreciate their quoting from the Bible. And, and, and I still have those people around on Facebook. But it's, Facebook is more clever. It's not like you look at your friends list. All the friends are there. So they should appear in the feed. You know, everybody's there. But there's just this separation that's gone on. People would say, I haven't seen you in a long time. It used to pop up in my feed every day. And it's just whatever they've come up with, it's, it's really obvious that we've been separated from each other somewhat or a lot in some cases. I mean, in some cases, I don't see people ever again. I used to see every day. Okay, that's targeting. That's, that's being a, the, the people that's happened to are targeted individuals, maybe on a very light level. But they are they have been targeted by these algorithms as persona non grata, right? That they, they're not doing that to themselves or to people of their political persuasion or their moral persuasion. They're doing it to people that are mainly Christian, conservative, you know, sold out to Jesus, you know, people that are, you know, prayer warriors, uh, po- people posting the political criticisms of all the swamp and, you know, people that are Trump supporters, you know, all these people have been targeted. Oh, and you, you understand that also goes into every fabric of our society. That's law enforcement, that's the FBI, NSA, that's all that, that's, that's all that. And then that's only just one click away from what? Beam weapons, yes, for, you know, harassment. How about this one? You turn on the radio and they start talking to you, and yet you're not psychotic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Hey, here, another one. Hey, there's a, it, there's, a, it walked in. Yeah, hey, it's over there somewhere. You know, go put some people on, you know, get it out of here, okay? You take, that thing out of here. Thank you. Thanks, please. Oh, I'd like to have a nice stressless day. You know, I don't like stress. You know what I mean? That's what they'll tell you. I just don't like stress. You know what I mean, Zeph? Oh, yeah, I really know what you mean. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. You really don't like stress, you freaking traitor. You traitor of humanity. You evil doer. You piece of slime. You gutless wimp. You don't like stress. So get that thing out of here, right? So I'm now a thing, huh? Calling me a thing? You sound crazy. You need to go to the doctor. Hello. Uh, yeah, well, we all understand. Bullying, stalking, cause stalking, gang stalking, political stalking. Uh, you know, uh, and all that. And we all understand talking in the third person around somebody, having conversations about another person or it or this or that. We all know who you mean. Oh, sensitized, sensitized are you? You better not let them see that. They know you're, you're on to them. Bad things could happen. Oh, I better be frightened. Well, I better be really scared of you. You've got all the power. You hold all the cards. I'm just trying to get, you know, an iced tea or something and go home. And You want to make sure that I know that there's no just getting iced tea and having a nice day. That's just, that's just not on the menu. You want to make sure that I know that when you talk in the third person, you mean me. You like to refer to our kind of people as it. Garbage. Losers. When we're much smarter than you. Much better than you at everything. Wouldn't be caught dead in some nowhere, dead-end thing like you're involved in. And one day, mark my words, evildoers who do evil hurt innocent people 
will have their comeuppance. They will. People that are throwing spells and witchcraft and talking to the third person, that's called bullying, by the way. Any of those kind of things will be recompensed. You good people out there, you, you meek little people, you have to realize you're more than a royal priesthood in God, you know, and, and some of the smart ones, they, they, they understand that about you. And that's why you get picked on, because they see that if you succeed, you restore to your rightful place, that they will cease to exist. It's either you or them, right? So you understand the problem. It's a, oh, no, no, only the top ones see that. The, the, the little ones don't. They, they go by, you know, your rank in society. Oh, you're good? You know, you you with a you know six hundred foot yacht, and you down here with your janitorial job, you're scum. That's what they see. But they're the the ones who are really smart. You know, they see, oh, the janitor is really powerful. The janitor is the beloved of God, and the yacht guy. We know him. We don't care. You know, see what I mean? So that's that's. Uh, you may not think of yourself as anything, just like me. You might be not that ambitious. I mean, I don't have really any plan. I just kind of do I do whatever the next thing is, you know. So no real plan involved in anything. There's no, you know, there's no... Uh, yet as I look back, it looks like there was a plan, right? Because I had that, the things to do and there was a progression and there was, you know, just wanting to do the Lord's will is what I want to do. I guess I'm ambitious to do that if, if that's... You know, those terms don't even really apply. And I want, you know, unlike a lot of people, I want, you know, people to do well. And they don't have to believe like me to do well. I want people to do well. If they're doing well, then they're going to be closer to God anyway. But yeah, I mean, you don't have to share my opinion. You don't have to. I still want you to do well. And... I don't want people to be in pain. And, I, you know, people I work with, people that I see, I love them, you know, brothers, sisters, whatever, on various levels of the spiritual walk, I want you all to do well. I, You know, people that are throwing curses and everything else, I want you guys to repent, you know what I mean? Because you, I want you to see that it's leading to a, 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 a dead end. You know, you need prayer and deliverance. A lot of people have demons, you know. Who have been so the first thing that happens to people when they start throwing stuff around and realizing there's power out there they could wield to, to, to hurt innocent people. What ends up happening is they get a demon inside them. They need to have deliverance to get that thing out. And uh, many people don't want to give up their demons because that's a source of power. And so it becomes a very, very, very. Uh, just an awful thing, you know, and you sometimes these people may seem like they're at the top of our society, you know what I mean? And and yet, uh, well, you saw some demon possession with uh, Peter Stroke, you know, you saw him on camera, and then you saw the uh, Hillary Clinton when she was in a red pantsuit, and Trump said something, and she goes, well, and then she shakes her shoulders like she's kind of in this high euphoric state. And then we saw Struck do the same thing. Uh, if you compare the two side by side, it, it's quite stunning. They're both in the same exact spirit. They're both in the same, have the same demon. And whatever it is, it's making them glow like they have a lot of energy. So, you know, yeah, they're looking to be possessed by the most powerful. These, are, these people are not my concern. The Lord doesn't, that's not my, my concern are just the everyday people, you know what I mean? That we... Lord is gathering his own to get out, to go on to the next thing. And this is not our home. Obviously, we're all going to die. <laughs> you become very conscious of that, believe me, when you get older. And um, and even in my rebuke of the evil doers, it's really because if you do evil, it will come back on you. That's what I'm trying to say. So therefore, you want to keep repenting and then do good to those who hurt you. A lot of these people, when they try to hurt you, they need prayer. They need deliverance. They need to be delivered from from a, from a horrible state. And then, you know, but it, it it's all based on free will. A lot of them just don't want to give those demons up. So that's the problem. So I'm, I'm done today. I feel like we've, we've covered it one more time. 
And, uh, well, we always cover things from different angles. People say, well, it's, it sounds similar to what you said. It, it, it sounds similar, but every day is a different, just like, you know, a diamond has many facets. We, we're dealing with the diamond, but we come at it from many, many different angles. Today was through the secular targeted individual, the, the people that have uh, some class action lawsuits, the, the uh, people that are getting together to try to do something, you know, petition the government to stop the harassment. And the, we're just mentioning the fact that this group has grown so exponentially over the last few years. And, uh, yeah, the lawsuits are going forward. You know, the lawsuits are going forward. The peop- some people are having some success. Uh, some people claim that they, you know, once they got rid of that particular type of harassment, they never had another problem like what I mentioned about, you know, what I just was going over with you, you know. What I was going over with, with, with you, you know, just kind of, you know, play acting it a little bit. That is, uh, that is... Uh, has its nexus in a multidimensional aspect, you know, because there's there's no way they can, like you could fly to Timbuktu and they'd be there waiting for you. This is this is all this is this is above our pay grade. Okay, that's we have to include that because most people that are targeted are experiencing that kind of thing that really defies explanation, and. Um, If someone is just being targeted for political purposes, and then once that problem is resolved, it it stops. You know, Mazel Tov, great, fantastic. You know, uh, the, 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 it's uh, it was only you know a, a certain reason, a political reason, a, a grand jury reason, you know, something like that. They try to get these people to commit suicide so they don't appear in the grand jury or lose their credibility. They're talking about this stuff that makes them sound crazy, makes them sound completely nuts. And so then it's like then they're kicked off the grand jury. Now we have, don't have to worry about you know what I mean. There's there's all that fabric, all that interweaving as well. And when that grand jury thing was resolved, all of a sudden it stopped. And that's all it had to do with. And then that would be okay. And there are people that are in that category. That would be a purely political targeting, like the IRS targeting conservative groups for audits. Because Obama ordered it, so there's mass targeting right there. And then that, but but then I would ask you: Are those same people that got those audits? Are they continuing to be on a list? Yes, they are, and yes, they are still being harassed. Okay. God bless you, each and every one, and. Uh,